Hello friends, it's Sherry from Turquoise Dreaming. How you doing today? Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me. I'm here with my scrap with me video of the week. Uh, well, really from, this is a new week since it's Sunday, but uh, if this one's for last week, <laughs> I just didn't do it yesterday because I wanted to do the flip through of uh, the Mother Goose journal. And thank you very much to the person that purchased that. But uh, yeah, it's sold and um, that was pure joy to work on that book. So I'm off organizing uh, another project right now. But in the meantime, I want to do my scraps, work with my scraps, because I need to work on those every week in order to keep them at least under control, if not get, make some <laughs> headway on using them up, right? So uh, it, first, I wanted to show you something I um, have made for my shop before, and I wanted to show you the inspiration. So this is a frog. This is a frog. He sits like this. Can you see him? I put him like this because this is how the view when he sits. He's kind of he can sit, he can hang over something. Anyway, he is a frog that I've had since I was a teenager. When I was a teenager, my thing was frogs, little cute. I mean, they're so cute as long as they're not real, right? <laughs> With their big eyes. So um, one time, my dad brought me home. Uh, in fact, I need to ask him where I was if he remembers where he got, like where he went, because he never really. He wasn't a traveling businessman or anything like that. So, you know, it wasn't like he traveled alone. Usually if he traveled, it was with us, you know, his family. And we went, we're going on a vacation or something or a little trip to Disney World because I, you know, we lived in Florida. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> um, he brought this home for me one time and I've had it ever since because it's just so cute. And it's my, my it's flat, you know, it has these flowers on it underneath is plain. And it has, it's filled with sand, so it's pretty heavy. So it could almost be like, maybe it was either made to hang, sit, or it even could have been a doorstop back then. And so uh, this was my inspiration because I, um, I wanted to make some more for my shop. So I had made three and they're sold, so I'm making some more right now. So I made uh, these two, this little guy, see? But now instead of sand, see they didn't have poly beads back then. Now they have poly beads, so these are lighter than sand would be. Plus, I was uh, the sand has never come out of this, but I could just picture if I made one, the sand would come out of it, you know. <laughs> so somehow it would get through the cracks or something. Uh, but not there's any, not that there's any cracks, but you know it's stuffed, so you have to I sew around it, and then the place where you turn it right side out and stuff it is over here on the side. So I can picture sand escaping from there. But anyway, it's filled with poly beads, so he can sit also. He can do a little sit, and he can hang over something. So just, um, I like using, uh, I kind of look for a fabric, like, see, this was flowery, and I always liked it so much because it was flowery. So that's kind of what I've been using so far on my frogs for my Etsy shop, is little flowered kind of uh fabric and this fabric right here was old I got it at a thrift store maybe feed sack I don't know because I'm not really a feed sack fabric um, expert but you know I, I probably wouldn't know if I know it if I saw it type thing but um this fabric was a like it was a uh, cover for like a kitchen appliance if you know what I mean like a toaster covey covey or a some other little cover that maybe you'd cover something up in your kitchen. I don't know exactly what it covered up. Maybe it was a, for a bread basket. I don't really know. But this is what it was. And it was kind of a round on the outside. So it was, uh, let's see if there's, yeah, there was a gather in it. I think I was able to not use the gather or like a little pleat. Uh, here, it, is this it right here? I think this is the pleat right here, maybe. I don't know, there was a little pleat in it and I was afraid, I mean, I, I would just it kind of ignored it because um, I wanted to use this fabric so bad and I just cut the fabric out for the frog. So this is how he came out of that piece of fabric. And then this was just some other flowered fabric that I had seen at a thrift store, but it was just fabric and it was, um, you know, with the linens and things and I saw it there. I was like, oh, that is so beautiful. I think that's where I got it. Either got it there or in a, in a fabric stack at Walmart. I'm not sure which one. 
because I, I think I got this one. I don't think it was a fabric stack because this was by itself. And I keep all my fabric stacks of, uh, fa you know, Walmart from the fabric stacks at Walmart. I keep them together. So I know kind of where I got it. And, you know, they all kind of go together too when you buy those fabric stacks. So anyway, I think that's what this was from a thrift store find where I just saw this uh, piece of fabric, kind of like a fat quarter. And I thought it was so pretty that I could either use it on a spine or... Now I ended up using it for, for this frog. So um, this one, you can see this one has green eyes. These are pulled from my vintage buttons, these two. So he's got vintage button eyes and they're sewn on. The eyes are sewn on. They're not glued on or anything. They're sewn on. Same with this. These are sewn on. These are newer buttons, but they are uh, doubled. If you can see, it's a yellow button on the bottom and a green button on the top. And I like to do that if I can, but I, with this one, I I could I didn't feel like it. I felt like I wanted to let these uh, be their own vintage, you know, so you can see the vintage uh, buttons of the, you know, to let those shine as vintage buttons, you know. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to be working on some more. I have two more pieces of fabric pulled out, but they do take a little time. You wouldn't think so, but, uh, you know, you got to get them sewn just right so all the beads stay in there. <laughs> And then it takes a minute to get the buttons together, really. And, you know, it just it does, things always take longer than you think, right? So um, let me put these over to the side. I just wanted to show you, because I don't think I ever showed you my frogs before. And I have them, you know, I had those three in my shop that sold. So I thought maybe I would share. So back to scraps. Um, first of all, I've been wanting to make some of these little circle tags. So I pulled this piece. This was for the piece of file folder that I had in my scraps. And so these are little circle pockets, and I use, um, if you have a two-inch circle punch, that's what I use to punch out the circles. And to make two of them, you just need to punch out two circles. Okay, so I punch out two, or you punch out three circles to make two, because you need one for the back and one for your little pocket. See, right here is a pocket in the front of this one. So, um... I took the two circles and then I took the third one and I cut it in half. So I was like trying to cut down the center of the circle, but I didn't want to measure. <laughs> so I just like, okay. And I cut it in half of what I thought was in half. And it wasn't in half, but I told myself it didn't matter. And it didn't really, because if you could see right here, this is where the pocket, this pocket is almost kind of up to the center of this circle. This one is down lower. It's going to fit on your circle no matter what. So I wouldn't stress on trying to cut the third one that you're using to, for the pockets right in the middle because it's going to work out either way as long as you have some space for a pocket. So and a, and a tag is going to fit there anyway, either way, whether it's bigger or smaller. And then I just took them to my sewing machine and made a quick little... Now you can sew all the way around if you want to just have that sewn edge all the way around and that would be pretty I didn't I didn't do that this time I just sewed the pocket on basically you can see the sewing on the back a little bit but so now these can be used I mean so there's a pocket this can be used as a tag I could put a little hole here and you know make a tag or you can glue it down on a page anywhere uh, bottom corner whatever on a po put it on another pocket uh, you could sew it on glue it on and then you have a little decoration plus a little pocket, you know what I mean? So anyway, lots of uh, little potential here for these. So I cut out I cut out the rest of that piece of file folder that I had in my scrap box and made all of these circles here. So I'm going to continue that off after the video today and finish those out. I just wanted to give you that idea for your scraps in case you haven't tried that yet. Maybe you've seen it, and maybe this is just a reminder, like, oh yeah, that's that's something really easy to do, you know, especially if you have a circle punch. So the other thing I thought I would do today is something I've been needing to do for a long time, and probably probably like a year ago, I or over the last year, not recently though, I have I was on a quest to use my book pages, so I have used a lot of them. And so like here's little um, kind of like journaling spots I made out of just taking a book page, folding it in half, and then I put paper on the inside. But I haven't really used them, and I did it to this whole stack. <laughs> I have paper ready to go all inside of these um, 
let me show these. These are upside down, but they all have little papers inside. But the problem is I kind of wanted to decorate them, and I haven't done that. So I need to turn them all over now. But, um, yeah, so I want to decorate these. Some I cut into tag shapes right here. You can see, like, some are just straight on the top, just basically folded in half. Some I made little corners and cut in into tag shapes, but again, they have the paper inside. So I need to decorate those, and that's a bunch, right? And then I have these are uh, envelopes I made from book pages. So these I just folded to be like, they could be envelopes or flip up, flip downs. So uh, I'm trying to decide, you know, do I want to sew them together? Do I want, I do want to decorate them at least and um, maybe put some paper in here, some, you know, either on all three spots or at least here and here as a writing space. So that's another place I can use some of my scraps. Then I made all of these library pockets out of book pages, a bunch. And I, I basically um, made all of these and I put a little tab on them to be able to label it, like a little label here, not a tab, but a label. But I want to maybe somehow decorate these. And I was gonna use them as library pockets, but I decided, <clears throat> They're a little bit, uh, I mean, they're old book pages, but they're a little bit, I feel like they're a little bit weak to use as, just as a library pocket, like in the, in the, uh, you know, inside of a book cover. I didn't want to use it for that pocket, but maybe on a page would be okay. But then I'm trying to decide, do I want to further decorate these or strengthen them in some way? Uh, I don't know. So that's another pile of things I can work on. Maybe use some scraps on those. This is a little pile of, let's see, these were like little, this was a flip up, flip down. Oh, this is a, oh, this is an envelope that I glued together. I did start decorating it. I have something glued on here. This is a pocket, as you can see. It's just a pocket out of a book page. I have a little finger slot here with, uh, I use my pinking shears on the top of these. So I have a couple of those ready to decorate. I have another stack of envelopes here, but these are already sewn and a little decorated. Like I sewed, I flipped it up around to the corners, sewed around and decorated the flap. So all of these are sewn. All of these are sewn with a decorated flap. <laughs> Those are the strips, you know, what you can use your strips from your scrapbook paper. Those are all the strips. I could just cut them down to fit on all of these flaps so they all have a little decoration so but do I want to go through which I think I do because I haven't used them I want to go through and because they're kind of uh, again weak to glue down so if I put them in a pocket I feel like they then they could be used but then I would like them to be a little bit more decorated maybe here on the back or which is actually the front of an envelope so that is another stack I can decorate and another stack of book pages I haven't to use because I want to decorate them. And then here's a pile of clusters that I used where I made scraps. I just put little pieces together and sewed around them. Like this is kind of like kind of like messy stitching, but not really. It's kind of it's pretty straight. But uh, just sewed around. I glued them together and then sewed around them. So that's what all of these are. Just little clusters that I've made. So all of these ideas you can do and you can make from your scraps. And then, you know, while, while you're making them, see, I, I even made little tiny ones here, <laughs> just like three or four pieces. I sewed them, I sewed around them and then sewed them together. So these can then be glued down on a page, but I want to put a little centerpiece on them. You know what I mean? So, so I have that, all of these little clusters. And I think I have a, a little bit more, but I'm not going to get those. I didn't get those out for today. This is, I think this is enough, right? <laughs> so then I pulled out from my scraps, my scrap box, a little bit more here of these scraps. Maybe we can, and they're colorful, I thought. Maybe I can cut something from these to use as decorations on those, you know. So I don't want this video to get too long. We're at 14 minutes. But uh, this was in my... This was in my scrap box, and it's a neat little circle. I have no idea what it's from. 
I don't remember, but it's really cool looking. So I'm going to cut this extra off of here. Apparently I pulled it off of something. And so I'm going to go ahead and use this as a centerpiece. I need some glue right there. Oh, it's got, see this part is torn right down the middle. So I guess I would just glue this side down and use this as the focal point for something. So let's, uh, <laughs> what do I want to start with? I mean, I could just grab and start, right? So, like I said, I want to put this right here. Uh, does it need something else under that? Let me see what would go with that. Something, we've got the book page, which is nice and browned. And then maybe, okay, maybe something from my, this is, you know, I need some, some copy dyed paper or something like here's some copy dyed paper that would look pretty under there let's cut a piece of that and that could be right there and then this could be right here I could round the corners on this I think that would look more see how it looks more finished and then so let's glue go ahead and glue that down let me get uh let's see let me use let me save my art glitter glue and use some in my craft bond because i have this one's almost empty but um this the book page is glued together pretty good uh with just you know craft bond or even just a glue stick I just want to use I do have a regular glue stick here but um, you know the the school glue the school glue glue stick Elmer's but uh, I know the craft bond I trust it to hold and not come up so I'm just going to use that and I'm kind of just going to center this as much as possible and we'll see how it glues down with the craft bond. It feels good, nice and flat. Okay, and then we'll put our centerpiece on there. Now this is thick. This I might use some art glitter glue on just because it's it's thicker. And I just want it to adhere and not come up. So just whatever glue you trust, I guess that's what you should go with, right? <laughs> okay. I was, I kind of like am resting now. This is my rest time because <laughs> I, we were gone yesterday and then I uh, was working outside this morning. So I'm like, okay, I need to rest. I'm going to go craft now because <laughs> I was, uh, killing weeds and uh, pulling weeds in my garden, my uh, vegetable garden, well, now I do, but uh, because I, I, I've had the, the area and the little, little um, you know, raised spots and plots, whatever, and I've had it for a long time, my garden, ever since we moved here, one of the first things we did was make my garden area, but I hadn't planted my, planted my plants this year because it's been cold up until now. Okay, that looks pretty. Uh, could put something else down here, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. This is, uh, this is, um, this is kind of like writ dyed paper here, or it might be avocado dyed. I don't know. It's got a pinkish hue, hue to it. So let me get that down. Let that dry there. Okay. So yeah, I was, um, I have been killing weeds for four weeks, waiting for the weeds to die, right? Every week I go out, every weekend I go out and spray. And the weeds are dying, but very slowly. I don't know why they're dying so slowly. I don't know if I'm mixing the mix wrong or uh, because we have so much rain, it's getting washed off, possibly. But uh, the weeds in my vegetable garden, they uh, were getting, they were starting to die, but I got impatient. So I just went around because I want my vegetable garden to be pretty. <laughs> you know, I don't want it to be full of weeds. It's like there's little paths in between all the little plots where I plant my vegetables. So I, that's where the weeds were. And so I didn't, 
you know, I don't want the weeds there. I want my vegetable garden to be pretty. And, you know, you don't want your garden to have a bunch of weeds in it. So I just um, went and let's cover this with something like something pretty. Let's cover this side first. I've got this little scrapbook paper where I can cut out the butterflies. There's two whole butterflies right here. And then I've just got some pretty paper here that I pulled out that I can use. This is from a scrapbook paper pad, and this is from, this is printed uh, from, I believe this is from Shabby Dabby Doodah, some of her collage work that she, she, um, that I got from her. So that would be pretty on there, wouldn't it? Let's, uh, let's see, do I have my ruler here? Where's my ruler? Let me see. Oh, I put it over by my sewing machine. Oh, that's not my tear one. Let me get my tear. This is my, this is what I call my tear ruler, but it's not a tear ruler. It's just a ruler that has a flat side on it that you can tear with that is not, you know, like this side will make your, this side will make your uh, paper even, but if you tear with a flat side that goes down to your surface, it will tear uh, more even. So that's, this is my tear ruler. <laughs> But yeah, so I got impatient with the waiting before the weeds to die in my garden and I pulled them all out this morning and uh, so now it's now it's pretty. <laughs> so now I'm happy with it. And I also planted, uh, well last weekend I had planted tomatoes and this week I planted the rest, I only have four, four beds. One bed is tomatoes and then the other three are... I planted uh, green beans, uh, peppers, red peppers, and cucumbers. Those are the easiest things to grow. Um, I've done other vegetables and either they didn't grow well or, well, pretty much they didn't grow well, so I didn't grow them again. Um, I have been successful with corn, but you have to plant a lot of corn in order for them to grow properly, they need to intersperse their pollen. <laughs> and so if you don't have enough corn, they won't grow. You know, but the last time I grew corn, uh, it didn't grow well. It just gave me little stubby corns. And I was like, well, that wasn't worth it. <laughs> you know, And corn is so cheap. I, I mean, I guess it's cheap everywhere. It's like at the peak of the corn season, which is probably about now or maybe all summer here in North Carolina, uh, you can get corn, the cheapest, I guess the cheapest I've seen, I'm trying to think, is it four for a dollar or eight for a dollar or something crazy like that. It's really cheap. So I was like, you know, corn is just not worth it. I just, I can get some very wonderful, delicious corn on the cob at the grocery store and <laughs> I don't have to go through all the pain of trying to grow it, right? And so, um, but there's nothing like a homegrown tomato, right? So now that's really pretty. I like that. See, that's what I wanted to do. Now I feel like, okay, it's ready to use in a journal. And before I just felt like, you know, it needed, it needed something pretty. So there we go. There's one. <laughs> let's get to tackle some more. Yeah, I like this, um, this collage paper from, I got it from Shabby Dabby Doo Doll, like I said. She's that same name on her Etsy. So if you want to get some of her her uh, pretty papers, just go to her sh Etsy shop. And I'm sure y'all know her. But if you don't, Shabby Dabby Doo Doll. I always kind of say it clear so people can... Let's see, how should we tear this? Let's do that. Let's tear this whole thing right here, and then we'll do a couple of envelopes. But yeah, so I got my garden planted now to wait for it to grow. And my boss had given me some marigolds, which I planted a couple weeks ago. So those are getting ready to have flowers. I saw some buds where the flowers will be sprouting out soon. And I also bought some marigolds a couple, or was it last weekend? I think it was. And then I planted those around, some around my mailbox and some in my garden. Like I had a bunch of empty pots from last year where that I keep in my garden, like with, and I put new flowers in them every year. So I got all those planted with marigolds. 
I planted some flower seeds. We'll see if they grow. I don't have much success with flower seeds, but I'll let you know if they grow. One was uh, wildflowers, and the other one was, uh, I think it was poppies. So we'll see if they grow. I, I've never had success with growing flowers from seeds, so <laughs> but I keep trying. I keep trying for some reason. <laughs> Uh, because I can't get those plants right now, I guess. Like, I can't buy a p bunch of f wildflowers. I can't buy a bunch of poppies right now. They're not in the store. So, you know, that's why I, I buy the seeds and think, well, if I could just grow them from seed, you know, that would be great. <laughs> okay. So there's another pretty one. Don't you love that? It has a butterfly right there. Isn't it? Didn't that work out perfect? It's like I planned it, right? <laughs> they both have a butterfly on them. And I didn't. Of course, you saw me do it. I didn't plan it. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so here's two more pieces. This one has a butterfly. Now I'm going to plan it right now that I can see. <laughs> now that I see what I'm doing. I'm going to plan that butterfly to stay, not rip it off. So let's uh, tear this top piece off. And then we'll collage our collage print out with the with the scraps right so and I am using I said I was going to use my craft bond I'm using whoa I told you this was almost empty I'm using my glitter art glitter glue let's use craft bond on this one and see how it does but so that's my I was doing all that and I did fill up my little sprayer with weed killer and I went around in some areas in the yard that I didn't hadn't sprayed yet I had it sprayed with weed killer because there's just a lot of areas where I spray weed killer and I hadn't got to those yet. I mean, I don't want to spend all day out there. I just spend some time out there killing weeds and whatever I don't get to, then I do the next week and start off in another area that I didn't get to, right? Okay, another butterfly. Very pretty. I'm probably going to go back and put some writing space in here so these will be ready to use after that but I love the I just love that collage paper on there okay and then that will do one more oh this is an envelope that's sewn let's do one of those instead of the flip out this one's already sewn and ready to go it's got a little strip sewn on the back so let's do this one and let's get ourselves I think I might be able to get one more out of that glue stick so um, got all that done outside but uh, all of the and I, oh and then I raked some leaves. Uh, I don't rake leaves in the fall because there's too many. We have like tons of trees around here, and it would just be a losing battle if you live in a house that's surrounded by trees. You know what I mean, right? <laughs> it's a losing battle, so I don't even bother in the fall. But in the uh, so then I go in the spring and. In the areas where I don't want leaves, I rake those out and leave the rest because there's nothing I can do about the rest of them because there's just uh, like millions of leaves around here. So um, anyway, so I got the leaves out of my vegetable garden, another vegetable garden thing. So it doesn't look like a weeded junkyard of leaves now. <laughs> it looks like a pretty vegetable garden. And I redid... Here's a little idea if you have a garden. I redid this little, or this reconfigured, I guess you could say. Uh, we had an old kind of a fire pit. Let's see, is that upside down? We had a fire pit, okay? And it was uh, one of the fire pits that it's, it has wheels and it's on legs, okay? And then it has a, like a bulb on the top where it has like a thing that looks like a fence around it and a little door that opens and then it has a lid a metal solid metal lid so you would open the door and put your wood in there and make a fire or whatever and the lid is uh, to keep the fire down and uh, whatever under control right so that was just uh, about a year or so ago it was all rusty and falling apart so um, I had to get rid of the bottom part it was just used pretty kind of useless to me and so let's decorate uh let's see what haven't we decorated let's see if there's anything i can do with this i can go ahead and strengthen the back possibly but do i want to do that 
I want to practice uh, gluing it down on something. Like, say I glued it down on here, what would it feel like? It would feel much more solid. Okay, I mean, I knew it would, but... Uh, so what if I glue it down on something? Here's something, here's some... Here's just some random little piece of... Uh, I think I got this in Happy Mail. It's a little piece of uh, cardstock. So let's try it. Let's just see how... We can make this work. So anyway, on my fire pit, I um, got rid of the legs with the wheels. They weren't anything I could use. So what I did was the little kind of, it has a bowl on the bottom underneath the little fence part where you put your wood. It's a metal bowl. So I planted a year ago, I planted, I put dirt in there and planted a plant in there. And it's a plant that kind of like cascades over the side. Okay, and it's kind of, uh, it's like an evergreen. It, it's, it's green all winter. It's a really nice little plant. It doesn't have flowers, but it just lasts, you know, from season to season. And uh, it grows pretty much anywhere, like a weed, kind of. And so I planted that in there. And then today, I took the fence part, which is about a foot or so high and it's round I put that on the ground as a stand and then I put the bowl part with the plant on it in it on top so it's like a pedestal now with a plant on top so it kind of you know it was the other way around when it was a fire pit the bowl was on the bottom fence was on the top you put your wood in that bowl part now it's switched <laughs> so it came out really cute. If you have an old uh, fire pit that you are thinking about throwing out and you have a garden, and you could even paint it. You could paint it. I didn't paint it. It's black. The bowl is black and the, uh, let's see, the, let me put some art glitter glue on here because this is cardstock and I want this to, to stay on there. I just want to see how this comes out. And this was in my scraps, this cardstock, just because it was a little piece, not necessarily, it wasn't exactly a scrap, but it was a little piece that I didn't want to put with my other paper. So I put it in here so I would use it. Anyway, um, yeah, that's just an idea. If you have a garden and of any kind and you want to use up your fire pit, <laughs> if you have one like mine, there you go. You can make a planter out of it. And you could paint it. Oh, that fence part is kind of silvery colored. So, okay, let me see how this feels now. See, this is weak right here, so you can't pull on this. I feel like this is weak. So I might not put it, that's one reason I guess I haven't used them because I didn't want to put it in my journal and have it rip, you know? But I can put it this makes the back stronger if I want to put cardstock on there. And then if I want to put a tag, just pretend like this is a tag here. I can put something in there. Uh, I guess I could put a strip across here and make just, just this top part stronger. Let's try that. A strip of something. Let me see. I, have, I did pull out some strips here of different... Like this is a piece of uh, cardstock here from the top of a paper pad. I could put that across there just to make this stronger because you know if somebody pulls on this, it's going to rip, right? And I just, and I, I'd hate for that. I'd hate to put it in my journal and then have somebody, as soon as they get my journal, rip, you know, rip it, rip this. So I guess that's why I haven't used them. So let's try this. I like this idea. And then I can actually use some of these, you know, instead of them sitting here forever in my craft room. So if you have some things like this that you've made and then you feel like, oh, it's not strong enough. So what can I do with it? There you go. You can make it stronger by adding pieces where, where it needs strength. Okay, now see, I feel much better about that. Now I don't feel like it's going to rip. That's awesome. Okay. I'm so glad we experimented today. So that's something else. Let's see what time it is. We're at 34 minutes. So let's do uh, 
one more of these and then we'll end it for today that's you know plenty of that's you know ideas for you to work on this week if you needed some ideas for your scraps and then I uh, will work on some more ideas for next week and when I write when I get ideas I have a little book my little idea journal that I and I have a list of scrap ideas so I, before I decided what to do today I went and looked at my little idea book and I said oh yeah I wanted to work on some of those circle tags and I really wanted to be able to use some of this stuff that I got ready so long ago and haven't just haven't done anything with it right so let's pick out a strip we'll glue these both on the same at the same time uh, I want a cardstock piece because that I think I want a cardstock piece anyway. Here's a piece right here. This is uh, this is cardstock. We'll put it right there. Okay, let's cut it to fit. So yeah, that was like exercise out there. After I was done, after I was done with all of that <laughs> work, and um, that I moved that uh, plant that fire pit planter. I moved that around this morning and that that thing is heavy so I was like oh my goodness got my exercise this morning for sure don't have I don't go to the gym anyway I exercise at home but I was gonna say I don't have to go to the gym today but I don't go to the gym I exercise at home if I if I exercise at all I exercise at home because well the gyms aren't open now anyway but so it's a good thing I do exercise at home right but I have all kinds of things, to, ways to exercise, so I don't have any excuse for not exercising at home. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I've got, uh, I've, we've had it for a very, very long time, and we just never got rid of it, thank goodness, because we have a treadmill that I actually bought used from a friend, so didn't pay very much money for it. And then I have a bike that I got for free, exercise bike, you know, inside bike. That I got from for free from a friend, so that's two pieces of equipment. And then um, I got myself uh, a Wii Fit, and they're not expensive now because they're not the thing. <laughs> they're not the popular game anymore. So you can get a Wii Fit for a reasonable price. The whole shebang, the Nintendo Wii, the Wii Fit game, and everything you need for not very much on eBay. So I have that, because I like options. I don't like doing the same thing all the time. Like every day, do whatever, the same thing. Every day, do the treadmill. I like to do different, you know, variety of things. So I got the Wii Fit. I got the treadmill, the bike. And then um, I also do uh, walking videos uh, with, what's her name? I can't think of her name right now. Anyway, it's a woman, Leslie? I can't think of her name right now. That tells you how long I've done since I've done her video. <laughs> because sometimes I won't do her video. She has really cool videos that you can walk along. And she's like the instructor, instructor. And she says, do this now. Do that now. You know, now we're going to do kicks. Now we're going to do walk. Now we're going to, you know, do this, that, and the other. But uh, I also do the walking uh, videos or exercise. When I watch, I can watch a YouTube video and walk. And, you know, do different, the same thing she does. And instead of watching her video, I can watch, catch up on my YouTube videos. Okay, so we did another one. Strengthen this pocket here where I was worried about this ripping and this back part. So got two done. So um, this is actually an excellent TV craft. All of these things we did today, except for the sewing on the circles. And you can just glue those together if you want to. We can do one of those real quick just by gluing. See, these I sewed. I have, that's the first time I've ever done them, believe it or not. I've been wanting to do those for so long and have never done one. So let's just glue one real quick before we end this video just to try it out. It's like I don't want to cover up any of the prettiness on these the circles. Okay, so let's, um, let's put these two as the base and this one as we'll cut in half. Like I said, I'm not going to even worry about getting it. I mean, I'm going to try to get it in the middle, but I'm not going to worry about not getting it in the middle. I'm just going to go for it here because 
it's going to fit on here no matter what. So two. Here we go. We have two. Since this is cardstock on cardstock, I'm going to use this. And since it might be pulled on, let's use a little art flare glue right on the edge. I don't want to take up any room from my pocket because these are small enough already. So I'm getting my glue right on the edge here. And then we'll let these dry. And I'm sure they'll be fine little pockets, you know. But we can see how they look with just being glued. Now you can, uh, you know, distress these if you want to uh, before you glue them or after you glue them. If you want this edge distressed right here for your pocket, you might want to do that before you glue it on here. So I'm just, since I'm gluing it, I'm getting it right down to the edge here, you know, not so it is not up from the edge of the, the base. And then glue this down real quick. Uh, oh, and I haven't given you my Walmart report. I give you my Walmart report every week, so you're probably trying to, trying to get, you're probably getting tired of it, right? But uh, my Walmart report is the status quo. Everything was the same, <laughs> so there's nothing to report. <laughs> nothing new, nothing different. Everything's the same. Uh, they are all up to date with the plexiglass on the cashiers and, you know, still have the two was it two two entrances and uh, I was able to when I got my plants I was able to come out the garden but you can't go in the garden area so status quo on Walmart this week okay so there we go um, this is not gonna this these tags will not fit in here now that we have that glued edge but I'm just showing you this is the glued tag there's our pocket and then here's the other one there we go. So it works either way, sewing, gluing, whatever you want to do. So here's what we did today. And I hope to carry on with this maybe a little bit more today. And then I'll be back tomorrow with, uh, tomorrow is when I have to post a video on uh, using up paper pads for my coll collab with Deb Houck's Cre Crafty Cottage. We post that every 25th of the month. So that'll be tomorrow's video. And then I'm organizing for my next project, which uh, I will have a video for. I want to show you um, what I'm starting with as far as the books. And then I'm going to show you my organization. <laughs> or, or if I can, if I can, if I can uh, do that, because I have to, uh, you know, somehow, I have to carry the camera around. It's not going to be on a stand like this. So I guess I could do that with a quick video of, of my organization and the books. Uh, not a detailed look at the books, just the books from the old attic. So uh, that's my next project. So here's what we did today. We did quite a few things, even though it didn't seem like it probably. We did these two pockets that we strengthened the back and the edges here. And we did these, we did this. We put this decoration on here, which I think looks a lot better now. And then you have all that writing space inside. And I'm not worried about the back. So that's not going to be decorated. These uh, I'm considering putting paper inside, but we did decorate this front fairly easily with just a collage printout from Shabby Debbie Doodah that I had in my scrap pile. And they came out with these pretty butterflies and flowers on the front. Look at that one with the flowers. So pretty. And so uh, now to put some writing paper inside of those, and those will be ready to go. So quite a few pieces done there. So thanks for watching today. Hope you enjoyed and got some ideas. If you um, haven't subscribed, don't forget to hit that so you get notified. You know, the subscribe and a little bell. Then you'll get notified uh, when I post my or publish my new videos. Uh, you know what the different things I'm talking about that I'm getting ready to do. You want to, if you want to be notified about those, just hit those two buttons. So anyway, have a great weekend and Memorial Day, and I will see you all next time. Thank you, and happy crafting.